Feeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. The truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Mountain Computers. This is Matt, and we've got a big episode in store for you today. Featured will be the Dell Optiplex GX280 that was in the last episode, as well as my Dell Precision T1500 workstation that was used as the basis for building my current desktop, and it's a very special computer to me, so... Today you'll get to see that pitted up against the Optiplex GX280, which has a new feature that I'm going to show off as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting things off, this is the MSI Radeon X1550. It's a DirectX 9 card with a 64-bit bus and 256 megabytes of onboard video memory. It runs on a PCI Express 16-lane slot, and it is probably one of the lowest-end PCI Express video cards that you can find. I picked it up used from a thrift store on a half-off day for $2, and it is filthy, absolutely terribly filthy. So I'm going to clean it up, and I'm going to take a look at slotting it into the GX280. But in order to do that, the GX280 is an SFF system. While well, this is a full width card, however, as you may have noticed, the PCB doesn't actually span the whole card, it fits perfectly into an SFF system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the gold heat spreader on the top and bend away the extra bit of aluminum that hangs off the edge of the card, and then that should fit perfectly into the GX280. Now, let's take a look at how the X1550 performs. We'll do this on a monitor that I actually picked up for free in an alleyway. Very fitting for the kind of budget that's been put into this system. Now, that monitor is a VGA monitor, and the output of the X1550 is a DVI port or an S-Video port. Now, I have a DVI to VGA adapter put into our lineup here, so without further ado, let's fire up Fallout New Vegas and give the system a test. Even though it's a game that came out in 2010, this game should be excellent for benchmarking our older systems that we're going to be testing today and getting a fair comparison of what their capabilities are when compared to each other. And besides that, Fallout New Vegas is just awesome and I'm using it so you can deal with it. <laughs> now right off in the opening cutscene you can already see the X1550 having problems with the video playback. Not a good sign for the portions it will actually have to render coming up. On the other hand, the audio, and you'll have to take my word for this, is actually playing back fairly smoothly, it's just the video that's having issues. Even playing the game at a resolution of 800 by 600 the lowest which the game will allow you to run in, at low settings, yields a barely playable experience. Cursors in menus jump all over the screen without much regard for actual user input until it settles down, and then 3D sections of the game stutter and while not being the worst experience, it's certainly not extremely acceptable. Try turning that resolution up to 1024 by 768 and turning the quality settings all the way to ultra and you won't be having a good time at all, as the screen seems to not even render correctly, the player's weapon leaves a white trail behind it 
and stuttering is extremely apparent, making the game absolutely unplayable. All this in mind, it's clear to see that the GX280 was never meant to be, and never will be, a gaming PC. But that's not to say that it isn't still a quality business machine. Alright, next up we'll take a look at the Dell Precision T1500. This PC is outfitted with an Intel Core i3-530, although it was originally outfitted with a Core i5-750. That's been switched to Daniel's PC now, and I'm using the i3 that came with his system as a trade. It has 4GB of DDR3-1333 memory on the stock Dell motherboard and it has a 120GB OCZ Vector150 SSD and a Seagate Barracuda 250GB hard disk. The graphics card featured in this system is an AMD Fire Pro V3750. I was originally going to make a video about me putting this PC back together after having updated every single part in my new PC away from the parts that came with this, but I found out in making it again that the motherboard was dead. So after some time I swapped that out with Daniel's old motherboard from his T1500 now that he's using the Asus P7H55M and the machine runs fine now. I.O. on the motherboard consists of a PS2 keyboard and a PS2 mouse port, a DVI-I graphics output off of the i3's integrated graphics, although this does not function when using Linfield processors such as the i5-750 and the i7-875K, which I've used in these LGA 1156 base platforms before. Um, also on the motherboard is an RS-232 serial port, six USB 2.0 ports, a 10100 Ethernet port, and microphone, headphone, and line-in jacks. The graphics card has two display port outputs and one DVI-I output. Front panel I.O. consists of four USB 2.0 ports as well as a headphone and microphone port. So let's fire up Fallout New Vegas and see how it runs. But first things first, this is a fresh install of Windows 7 so it's time to Hurry up and wait for those Windows updates to go through. Alright, in all seriousness though, this game actually does play very well on this system. Looking at the opening screen, you can see that the suggested quality details go to high, as opposed to low for the GX280. And once we actually get into the game, the quality looks brilliant, of course, being at high. For Fallout New Vegas, it looks brilliant, I should say. And the playability is vastly increased. The game is very smooth. I tried turning the game up to ultra settings again at the max resolution. That didn't go so well. But after a run of overclocking on the graphics card, I was able to get it to run one setting below max resolution at ultra just fine. So we'll finish up the video here with a look at me trying Fallout New Vegas on the T1500 at highest details at the highest resolution that my monitor supported. So not surprisingly, the Dell Optiplex GX280 is not exactly a gaming PC. With a Pentium 4 and a very low-end video card, its most suitable application would be 
business related applications with maybe a light sprinkling of viewing some 3D content, not necessarily generating it. And the Delft T1500 does a really good job with it for the system that it is anyway. Um, it's already seven years old now, so that system is still a very respectable PC for anyone looking to get into PC gaming. If you need an intro level PC, the T1500 or any LGA 1156 based system for that matter is really worth a look. So I guess I'll leave you guys with that and share the video with a friend if you really think that they'll enjoy it. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.